going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller, and today we're going to be talking about guilty pleasure watches. Now guys, you know, there's no rules to watch collecting. You can wear what you want, you can buy what makes you happy, uh, but I think individual to individual, we each have our own rules that we've made for ourselves, right? Like, oh, you know, I tend to dislike these kinds of watches. Oh, these designs are not my cup of tea, yada, yada, yada. Well, there's watches that kind of break all these rules that we have for ourselves, and those are the guilty guilty pleasure watches, watches that we might not be super excited about admitting that we like. And uh, I get asked about these pretty much all the time during my live streams. People want to know which watches I like, but I keep secret. And um, yeah, instead of kind of answering those and describing them on a live stream, I figured, you know what, let's go ahead and make an episode about it. And that way you guys can see what I got in my head. So without further ado, these are five of my main guilty pleasure watches. Again, kind of break the rules for me. It's 12.48 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, my first guilty pleasure watch is a watch I've mentioned on this channel before. Um, it was under the episode, I think, ugly watches from companies I like. And even in that episode, I wasn't sure if it should be on that list because it is ugly, but it's beautiful at the same time. Kind of how I've heard people describe me. <laughs> I'm dead inside. That's right, the Cartier Pasha Golf. Now this watch was designed by Gerald Genta and it has a very specific function. Uh, it's to help the golf player, the golf enthusiast. And uh, yeah, I don't play golf. I'd have absolutely zero use for this watch, but it's so interesting, wonky. It has a bunch of pushers and crowns on it, just little doodads and beep bops. Things that would help you if you're a golf player to keep score, I guess, but uh, you know, it's just weird and specific, and I'm oddly enamored by it. It's just really cool. Now, there's a few different variants of this watch. In fact, Gerald Genta actually had an almost identical version. Um, it's not identical, but it's similar as far as the layout of the watch uh, for his own watch series. And uh, yeah, again, it was another golf watch. I think the Cartier version is just, you know, that much more mm, beautiful and weird. Uh, but the one that Gerald Genta had for himself, uh, it was also, you know, kind Kind of just weird. But yeah, this is totally a guilty pleasure of mine. I keep coming back to this watch and being like, man, very, very cool. Now, one has sold at auction for around $44,000. So uh, yeah, these are pretty pricey watches. But again, if you like this watch, um, you're either going to love it or hate it, is what I'm trying to say. It's not, you can't really be on the fence about it. All right, next up, a Vacheron Constantin. Now, this is a watch that came out during 2019's SIHH, and people went bonkers for it. Uh, the Vacheron Constantin Traditionnel, uh, traditional twin beat perpetual calendar. Okay, this is a perpetual calendar, but it has a very unique function or complication, whatever you want to call it, uh, you press a button and it changes the watch's frequency. That's right, as if this Vacheron wasn't impressive enough already, I mean, you look at it, there's a ton going on, there's a bunch of decoration everywhere, especially on that gorgeous case back. Uh, you press the button, you change the watch's frequency from five hertz to 1.2 hertz, and I know some of you guys are like, why would you ever want to do that? Just leave it at the higher frequency, right? Everyone wants a watch with a nice, high, smooth frequency. Well, this is a perpetual calendar and if you leave it at the 1.2 frequency so the slower frequency um, you can extend the watch's power reserve to about two months okay and that's very useful for a watch like a perpetual calendar whole lot of information very specific complication and uh, that way you won't have to reset it you won't have to worry about it running down and dying out and then you have to go through the process of you know getting it reset and all of that so yeah kind of a unique hyper specific complication, um, changing it from five hertz to 1.2. Very, very cool, but why is this a guilty pleasure of mine? Well, I just simply don't typically like skeleton watches, and you can see pretty much everything going on in this watch, but something about how they did it, it just speaks to me. I think it's gorgeous. The case back, gorgeously decorated. Uh, the contrast going on the dial, you know, you can see the sub dials, but it's also transparent. It's just very cool. So there you go, you're kind of mixing this unique function and beauty at the same time. Vacheron just killed it with this one. I've never seen 
one in person, but all the pictures, they just look gorgeous and it's definitely a guilty pleasure of mine. And real quick, moving on to another Vacheron Constantine perpetual calendar, but this is an overseas ultra thin skeleton watch. That's right. So this does not have that twin beat functionality. It's just a really fun, beautiful sports watch that definitely breaks a big rule of mine. Okay. Skeleton watch is typically a no, no. I don't like them, but there's some that are pulled off so nicely. And this is one of them guys. It's just sporty, elegant, refined, cool, a whole lot going on. It's definitely busy, but it's gorgeous. I don't know why. I mean, you're getting that perpetual calendar complication. You're getting a gorgeous moon phase complication. And it's a little bit translucent there down by the six o'clock. So you can see the moon as it goes through its lunar cycle. There's zero simplicity here. I would not consider this a simple watch whatsoever. It's definitely busy. It's just really well done and I like it. I don't know. I just, I like it. Mikey likes it. And on to another very guilty pleasure of mine. I think I've just come to the conclusion I need to admit to you guys, I just, I like skeleton watches. Uh, Cause this is another very skeletonized watch. The Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot X. That's right, this Pro Pilot X Caliber 115 was a fairly new release and uh, yeah, titanium everywhere, hyper skeletonized. It was a big deal for Oris because of the movement they're using. That's right, their in-house Caliber 115 movement has a power reserve of 10 days. Very, very impressive for this company. Uh, again, I think it's a really nice execution, very futuristic, still very tasteful, and again, all titanium, very lightweight, high speed, very precise. You can see everything going on there. And uh, yeah, it's just not off-putting in any way. A lot of skeletonized watches I've found in the past, they just look really off-putting. Uh, they're busy for the sake of being busy, um, but some really knock it out the park. And this is one of them, the Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot X caliber 115. Which brings us to the final guilty pleasure watch I wanna go over in today's episode. And like initially there's nothing super off-putting about this watch. This is just very much a rule I've had for myself. I don't like the Patek Philippe Nautilus series. It's just very, very bleh. I don't, I don't really like them. I've seen them everywhere. They're kind of just the flavor of the week. Everyone has them, everyone wears them. It's kind of what's been going on with the AP Royal Oak, right? AP has just become Royal Oak and Patek Philippe, you know, nowadays, it's just people associate Patek with the Nautilus. It's unfortunate. So I guess you could say I'm just sick of this watch. Now I'm coming back around to the AP Royal Oak, but the Nautilus, I still, for some reason, have not come back around to this watch. It's just, I am, I'm just, I, I'm unimpressed. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. But there's one Patek Philippe Nautilus that has been discontinued for a while that I just keep looking at pictures of. It's just a gorgeous watch, not super common. I know rose gold is kind of the thing right now, but what about the yellow gold variant? I'm sure some of you guys didn't even know that one existed. That's right, the Patek Philippe Nautilus Yellow Gold 3800-001, my favorite of the bunch. And again, you hardly ever see them. Elegant, sporty, very sleek and smooth. This watch has got it all and it's solid yellow gold. I understand a few years ago when rose gold was kind of coming up as like the big material to use. It was fun, it was something new to look at, but now it's just, let's come on, I'm over it. Let's go back to yellow gold. Now you're gonna have a heck of a time even finding prices on the secondhand market for this specific yellow gold Nautilus. I can guarantee you it's practically unobtainium, um, very, very expensive. The only thing I personally own that kind of has a similar sportiness uh, would be my yellow gold Rolex President, but still, it probably doesn't even hold a candle to this watch. There's just something about it that is very appealing to me. And I think it's that, you know, after all these Patek Philippe Nautiluses, we see all of them in rose gold, this yellow gold, it just stands out. It's something different and I appreciate that. But there you have it guys, five of my guilty pleasure watches. Now I don't wanna end here. I'm going to make a few different installments of this series because Believe me, there's a bunch more I'd like to share with you. But first, I wanna hear from you. Which watches kind of break the rules for you? Uh, kind of break the mold in regards to something you typically never ever wear? Leave me that comment, I would love to hear from you and we can continue this conversation in the comment section. And guys, if you had a laugh, if you had a chuckle, if you learned something new, please consider clicking the subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the content we're doing here. Uh, you get four pieces of content a week 
for pretty much every one of the subscribers. Unless you're a channel member, then you get six pieces of content a week. That's right, an extra live stream and an extra edited episode for you guys. We just uploaded my daily quarantine routine video. It was a whole lot of fun filming that, and I like sharing more of myself with you guys over on the member section. So hit that join button next to the subscribe button. It's essentially YouTube's Patreon, $4.99 a month, and you get six pieces of content a month, uh, six pieces of content a week, excuse me, and access to that members only Discord channel. Uh, super duper, a uh, whole lot of fun. I just, I love all my members. You guys freaking rock. Uh, yeah, please join. I'd love to see you there. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool watch related gear, check out the affiliate links in the description below. We got watches, watch winders, watch straps, watch toolkits, everything the watch collector needs. Check out www.thetimetellershop.com, the number one place to find affordable vintage luxury watches handpicked by me, serviced with a one year warranty. Like, comment, subscribe, share this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. You thought I froze.